What does an aircraft carrier have in common with a hospital? One floats on water and is a machine for achieving military mastery. The other sits on land and is a machine for achieving mastery over disease. But they're both artificial, self-contained cities. They're both very expensive to construct and operate. And they're both islands operating separate and apart from their surroundings. I'm a practicing architect who designs hospitals. I spend every waking moment trying to get people in the world of architecture and people in the world of healthcare to see that they share a common mission to protect and promote health. And yet, for the last 70 years, our healthcare system has been caught in a massive industrial paradigm that actually has very little to do with health. We've created a sick care system so focused on curing advanced stages of disease that it's largely irrelevant to the health needs of most people. We've been obsessed with healthcare's ultimate delivery machine, the hospital, building ever more specialized towers of disease. No expense too great, no building too large. And when one hospital will no longer suffice, we build 21 side by side. The Texas Medical Center is the largest in the world, near downtown Houston, with 106,000 employees at 54 institutions co-located on one and a half square miles. This is a 20th century industrial system, like agriculture, chemicals, or fossil fuel energy. And like those systems, it creates waste, some dismal work environments, and a load of externalized impacts. The inconvenient truth for all of us is that it contributes to the problem it's there to solve. Healthcare is energy intensive. If US healthcare were ranked as a country, it would be the world's 10th largest carbon emitter. Our hospitals use two and a half times the energy of European hospitals, which are in countries that have higher health status and lower costs. While we seek to perfect our antiseptic care environments, we dump pharmaceuticals in our water, disposable products in our landfills, and greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. These all contribute to environmental degradation, and they're all preventable. And how does it feel to inhabit these healthcare environments? These endlessly deep floor plans where surgeons literally never see the light of day? Summer, winter, day, night, it's always the same. Does this re you relate to this workplace? <laughs> Our hospitals can't function without massive inputs of electric lighting and mechanical ventilation, a permanent life support infrastructure. To steal a metaphor, they're comatose. And to me, there's something really ironic about asking caregivers to keep us alive in buildings that feel dead. But the US healthcare system is beginning to wake up, to connect healing the earth and healing people, to accepting and acting on the core notion that you can't have healthy people on a sick planet. We all know that health is more than health care and more than physical well-being. It's a scalable concept that ranges from individual to community to global. So how do we transform this 20th century model and move from a system that delivers health care to one that creates actual health? The philosopher Wendell Berry reminds us that when health is the aim, a good solution acts the way a healthy organ acts within the body. 
These solutions solve problems without creating new ones. They create a cascading series of benefits instead of externalized harm. My discipline, architecture, has an emerging movement called restorative design that seeks these good solutions. But its ideas can be applied to virtually every operational system in healthcare, not just to buildings. Restorative design is about moving from so-called solutions that degrade health and the environment to true solutions that do no harm and heal some of the harm we've already done. It's about finding solutions that stop making us sick. Let's return to the healthcare worker who walks all day on shiny vinyl flooring. We know vinyl flooring makes people sick because healthcare workers account for more than 40% of adult occupational asthma, an issue linked to the cleaning chemicals that are used to wax and strip those floors. But it doesn't end there. In a place known as Cancer Alley in Louisiana, that's home to more than 150 chemical plants, including vinyl manufacturing, 91% of residents report at least one health problem linked to chemical exposure. When we walk on that floor, we don't see this family in Louisiana. And that's a problem because we won't build hospitals that restore health until that harm is visible, until we can connect our practices with their environmental and health consequences. Food systems and diabetes, development and habitat destruction, energy and climate change, chemicals and body burden. Right now, the environmental and health costs of our healthcare system are not transparent. But the good news is, when those costs become transparent, the healthcare community acts. In 1995, an organization called Healthcare Without Harm made the healthcare community aware that medical waste incineration was the second largest contributor to dioxin emissions in the US. Within a decade, hospitals shut down 99% of their 5,000 medical waste incinerators. Kaiser Permanente now serves patients and staff organic food sourced from on-site farmers' markets, using their purchasing power to shift from an industrial food system that relies on pesticides, growth hormones, and antibiotics to a sustainable and local system that avoids those issues and supports healthier food choices. That's cascading benefit. Hospitals are beginning to take responsibility for their energy impacts, dramatically reducing energy use and greenhouse gas emissions. Near Seattle's Swedish Medical Center has constructed the country's lowest energy-consuming hospital, 60% less energy, just by optimizing building design and conventional energy systems. And in Greensburg, Kansas, Kiowa Memorial is the country's first carbon-neutral hospital, rising from a tornado to run on wind instead of fossil fuel. And some hospitals are reaching beyond their four walls, engaging their communities to build health. Gunderson Health System, based in La Crosse, Wisconsin, is partnering with their community to become the first carbon-neutral health system by the end of this year. They're investing in community wind farms and partnering to harvest methane from landfills, brewery waste, and yes, cow manure to offset 100% of their energy needs. Gunderson is both eliminating the harm from burning fossil fuel and reducing the environmental and economic burden of these wastes in their communities. But too often, hospitals don't acknowledge 
that how and where they spend their money impacts community health. And their focus on saving money through global supply chains bankrupts their local communities. To address this problem of poverty and local economic disinvestment, the Cleveland Clinic, Case Western, and the Cleveland Foundation launched the Evergreen Cooperative. This collection of employee-owned local businesses supplies the hospitals and the communities with organic vegetables, laundry services, energy retrofits, and solar installations. This is building health. And when we build restorative hospitals, how do they feel to inhabit? They're connected to nature and their surroundings. They feel alive. You don't have to be afraid to breathe, because a restorative hospital is constructed with healthy materials that are maintained with non-toxic cleaning products. You don't have to worry about flooding or sea level rise, because a restorative hospital, like Spalding in Boston, is constructed and designed for resilience to extreme weather. And, by the way, at Spalding, you can open the windows to hear the sounds of birds and boats and feel the harbor. And finally, at Thunder Bay, patients go fishing in a stormwater management pond that's part of the hospital system. It's designed to hatch and release fish to the nearby river. So whether you're outside or inside a restorative hospital, it's always healing. Now, you may be wondering what all this costs. Surely, if this was affordable, all our hospitals would look like this. But I will tell you, it's not money that prevents us. It's mindset. Because many of these solutions are cost-neutral or actually generate financial savings. The reason we don't do these things is because sometimes, like with the vinyl flooring, it's difficult to see the harm. And sometimes, it's just more comfortable to continue to design and operate the way we always have. But hospitals that demand transparency get it. And some hospitals already serve healthy food, conserve resources, and partner with local business. These are not risky behaviors. If we can commit to building single-bedded rooms because they're better for health and safety, we can construct those rooms with healthy materials and place them in buildings that restore habitat and operate pollution-free. We can say no to antibiotics in the food, to vinyl in the buildings, to greenhouse gases, and to the hundreds of other negative health impacts we create every day. For us to survive, we know our industrial systems have to change, and so does healthcare. You are the trust holders of health in our society. When you say no to harm, we can finally leave all of those systems behind. When you say yes to health, everything can change. Thank you.